In this video, I'm going to be talking about tanking in New World and everything you need to know to start tanking as a playstyle in the game. Now, tanking is when you have the attention of all the enemies so that they're mainly focusing their attacks on you while the rest of your group focuses on damaging them down while your healer keeps everybody alive. That's the general composition of a party. Now, as a tank, it's your duty to make sure all the enemies attack you instead of the rest of your group. Now, you can do this by doing several things. First of all, instigating battles and fights is a great start, so make sure that nobody in your party is starting off battles because it will end up with the monsters attacking them instead, and you'll have to use a taunt ability, which I'll talk about later, uh, to get them to attack you. In order to know if an enemy is focusing on you, you'll see it by these red pointy things next to the health bar. So when you don't have the aggro of a monster, it will look like this on their health bar. When you do have the aggro, there'll be kind of like these triangle red glows to the side of their health bar, much like that. And this, of course, is how you tell if the enemy is attacking you as well as them actually, well, attacking you physically. Now let's talk about the attributes that you need as a tank. So mainly you will need constitution to increase your health and your armor by getting the several bonuses here. Generally you want to put a lot of points into constitution to get your health as high as you can and some points into strength depending on the weapon you're using which I assume you should be using sword and shield as your main weapon to tank with because you actually have the shield and you can block and it's great. They also have a lot of taunt abilities on the weapon. I do recommend having some extra strength early on as you're playing the game in early games because before your weapon is really leveled up, you don't really have a lot of your abilities and your taunts available, so you want to make sure you're doing enough damage to actually keep your threat on the enemies that you're fighting so that they keep fighting you. As you can see here, I'm using the Sword and Shield for the Defender abilities here because this is obviously catered for tanking. Now, I'm not going to go too much into specifics of which ones you should pick. Most of these give you boosts to your armor, your stamina kind of blocking, and a reduction against certain types of damage, which are things that you should focus on because you want to reduce the amount of damage that you take from enemies. But you also want to be able to taunt. So having Shield Bash is an ability that you highly need because it has a taunt gem compatibility, which means that if you have a certain gem placed into one of your gear, like your sword specifically, you'll be able to use this as a taunt. So every time you use this weapon on an enemy, you will generate more threats, which will turn that enemy to fighting you instead of any other party members on your team who are doing more damage or getting more threat, like the healer, for example. Healers tend to take a lot of threat when there's no tank around. Defiant Stance is a really good ability that not only acts as a defensive like buff where you can reduce damage taken by 30% for 8 seconds, but if you actually have a taunt gem compatible in one of your weapons, you'll be able to do an AoE taunt making all the enemies around you within an 8 meter radius attack you for 6 seconds. Your final ability that you unlock here for the defensive formation under the defender tree is really good because every time you have your shield up and you're blocking, you're actually reducing the damage by 30% for any allies standing within 2 meter radius of you. As you can see here, it's indicated. It looks really cool and makes you feel like a tank. Another one that I feel like I should specifically mention is Recuperation, which increases all your healing and regeneration increased by 10%. So not only does this make potions heal you for a whole lot more by 10%, which is great, it also works on your travel rations or your light rations or your light meals that heal you over time. As you can see here, if you have the buff, which actually stays when you die, by the way, a lot of people think that the buff gets like removed when you die, it stays there and it heals you every 2.5 seconds for 20 minutes. Look at my health. It's 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 physically going up quicker than this enemy can hit me in the back. And if you take note that we're both level 27, like this is absolutely crazy, dude. Like you gotta have this this ability as soon as possible because it makes light rations really good. And light rations in general are really great for that like over that overtime healing, that heal that you get every 2.5 seconds is amazing. All right, so back to the sword and shield. So we're obviously using the sword and shield and we need to talk about the specific gem that we have in the sword that allows us to be able to use taunts. Now I believe you can use any piece of armor or weapon that has a gem slot available so that you can put the gem in it. Now you can see right over here on my sword, I have the taunting one effect. And obviously if you have a higher gem quality, you can have a taunting two, taunting three, better qualities and increased threat. So it says here taunts are active. So now this means all the abilities that have a taunt capability, this means they will now work as a taunt and I generate a hundred percent more threat by having this gem on my sword over here so every time I'm attacking enemies they are very likely to only focus on attacking me instead of swapping to people in my party like the healer or somebody else who's doing a lot more damage I will be able to keep the boss or the enemies fighting me which is what you need. 
Now, in order to get the gem, you have to go to a stone cutting table. This requires that you actually have a carnelian gem. Now, the stone cutting table, as you can see here in any settlement, looks like this. It's where you process stone, but you can also cut gems. Now, in early game, I highly recommend you go to somewhere like Windsward or Everfall to buy these because it will be the most common place to actually get them off the market, the trading post. And you can see here, I'm crafting the cut floored carnelian gems here at the stone cutting table. And you can see the, the gems here, when you get them, they have two different abilities. Now, when you apply this, it can give you one of the ability or the other one. The one gives you a 100% threat generation or more threat. And the other one makes you generate 4% less threat, which is the complete opposite of what we're trying to do. Something like a, Someone like a healer would benefit more from that because that would reduce their threat income. A couple tips about gems quickly. A gem, when you sock it into a weapon, you cannot take the, the gem out the weapon once you've put it into the weapon. It basically stays in the weapon until it's replaced. And if you replace it with another gem, because you can't replace it with the same color gem, you can't replace a carnelian gem with a carnelian gem to try to get a different effect. You actually have to replace it with another gem and then be able to replace it with a carnelian gem again in order to replace it and change what gem is in that slot there because it doesn't let you like swap it with the same one. It's a bit weird, but that's how the gem system currently works in New World. Now, while I highly recommend using the Sword and Shield tank because it's the only weapon that you can actually use the shield with the weapon, the sword, you can still get a taunting ability on the spear, the great axe, the rapier, and the hatchet. But you do lose a bit of the defensiveness by having the shield on the sword and not having the shield with these, those other weapons. You could alternatively go with the lifestaff to heal yourself, which I've been doing for early game. But I really want to move over to a secondary weapon that's going to be really helpful. And for me, I would pick from ones that actually benefit me as a tank, like the rapier, the hatchet, the great axe, or the spear. Now, immediately, I would look at the hatchet because not only does it benefit from strength as an attribute which you use for your sword and shield anyway, the hatchet also has a ton of survivability and good damage weapons. It also has a final ability effect in its actual weapon abilities to allow you to avoid death. Like, instead of dying, you'll be reduced to like 50 health or something and you will not be able to die for 3 seconds. That as a tank is brilliant and that's something I'm really looking to build very soon. Now it's time for some tips on how to actually tank. So when you run up to a group of enemies, make sure you do your Defiant Stance, which is obviously your biggest cooldown ability that gives you that 30% defensive buff. And then you just hold up your shield in front of the enemies and you make sure you try to do some abilities that is able to hit all of them at once so that they keep your aggro on you. And then you basically just kind of tank them out. You can attack every now and again, depending on the healer or how hard the enemies are hitting. Uh, if the enemies are hitting really hard, make sure you instead just hold up your shield the whole time. You should also know that every single time you get hit while you have your shield, it does take a bit of your stamina out. And when you end up losing all your stamina, your armor or your shield guard drops. And it drops for 3 seconds to regenerate to 100 again before you can start blocking again. So against bosses, this is really tricky and also really dangerous. So make sure when you're not getting attacked, actually do some of your own attacks. Let go of your shield guard for a bit to actually regenerate your stamina. Or get one of the abilities that allow you when you use your shield rushing abilities or your shield bash attack to actually generate stamina so that you can keep your stamina. Because when you don't have stamina, you can't use your shield which is tricky. Tanking is tricky in this game. Especially since you're in heavy gear, you move really slowly and your dodge consumes stamina and also doesn't really move you out of the way all that much. So make sure sometimes you actually just run away, like just kite, get out of range of enemies hitting you so that you can generate your stamina back so that you're able to survive a bit longer. Because you can see here against boss fights like Simon Gray, it's it's really tricky to stay alive and, and keep your stamina up while trying to tank everything hitting you the entire time. Yeah, it's something you just have to master and practice, and I hope this video is able to help you get that practice in. And thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I do reply to every single one. Thanks.